Isaiah 35 is an extremely exciting and encouraging passage of Scripture. And I get excited every time I read it. It's got, it's, it's laden with such powerful promises. It's, it's full of such uh, joy about what is going to take place. And it, it promises that the wilderness and the solitary place are going to be glad for them. Now, the, the question is, after you read all this, who is the them? Who are they? Who are they that the wilderness and the solitary place are going to rejoice over? Yeah, who are they? And Isaiah 35 doesn't tell the whole story. You, 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 you got to go back a little bit. And so for a few minutes, I, I, need, I need you to stay with me very closely attentive, if you would. And I, I, I want to lead you back to Isaiah 35, starting with chapter 32. I'm going to condense and give you the Reader's Digest condensed version for the sake of of your time and endurance. But I do believe that the Lord's going to make this clear by the time we're done. Pro- Isaiah prophesies in chapter 32 about what would happen to those that are at ease in the church. And and if you are at ease in the church, the Bible clearly prophesies that God will send struggles and trials to those uh, who are not being completely obedient to his word. And sometimes we get it a little bit backwards that the trial is come to destroy me. No, 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 no. When you're at ease, you're on your way out. But but God in his infinite mercy and kindness uh, sends struggle, so you'll have to turn back to him. And, and I want to encourage you today. Uh, if you're going through a trial, it's not because God meant to destroy you. Because what does not destroy you only makes you stronger. Hallelujah. And so I want you to know underlying all of this uh, is the fact that God loves you and God cares. Uh, and he's got your best interests uh, at the forefront of his heart. And in Isaiah 32, verse 13, he begins to tell the effects of beginning to stray from God's perfect plan. And he says, upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy. See, see, this is the way God intends for it to be. On the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken. And the multitude of the city shall be left. The forts and the towers shall be dens forever. A joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. So what used to be a vibrant uh, living organism, a city, uh, becomes a desolate place. When sin enters into the picture. And I love God so much, uh, and, 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 and sometimes the word of God paints uh, such a desolate picture. All right. and, and you're reading and you're saying, God, where is the hope? Where is, where is, we're talking about the valley, but where's the mountain, Lord? And, and right in the midst uh, of all of this that's describing the degradation that happens in a life, in a city, in a nation. The Bible drops a, a blessing right in the middle of, it, middle of all this in verse 15. He says, until, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness, the desert place uh, becomes a fruitful field. And the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Let's keep reading. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness uh, and righteousness will remain in the fruitful field and the work of righteousness shall be peace 
and the effect of righteousness, quietness, uh, and assurance forever. Hallelujah. So even in the middle of, of desolation, God always drops uh, a nugget of hope. Right in the middle of what used to be my hopes and my dreams. God drops a nugget that says you can hold on to this. Hallelujah. Going on to chapter 33. I'm going to come back to that. God speaks through his prophet again and foretells the judgments and punishments against the enemies of his people, the church. He says the sinners... In Zion will be afraid. Fearfulness will surprise the hypocrites. Going on to chapter 34, God describes how the judgments will play out on the earth because of sin, which was inspired, encouraged by the enemy, our adversary, Satan. And Isaiah begins to tell in chapter 34, verse number 11, about the wild beasts that will inhabit these desolate wilderness places. He begins to name off things like the bittern is one of the wild beasts and the cormorant and the owl and the raven. I, I don't know what the cormorant is, but I don't want him on my landscape. I, I don't know what he is. I don't know what the bittern is other than a, a, a nocturnal creature. And, and you keep reading and, and the, the owl is there and the raven is there and the satyr is there. Half man, half goat. These are demonic creatures. And the Bible says there's also going to be dragons. Who knows what that really is? And vultures, uh, things that eat on the dying or the dead. And you're reading through here and you're saying, my God, is there hope for anything? And I'm here on Sunday morning. I got a word for somebody. And you feel like Isaiah chapter 32 through 34. And all the joy of the hope that you started off with It seems like uh, the palaces of hope uh, have been desolated uh, by discouragement. (laughs) And you're here today and you, you come and put your best foot forward. But life has dealt you some critical blows. uh, And you're wondering and you're reeling, am I ever going to come out of this? I know where I'm at. You caught up behind you. And I, I, I'm just a man like you are. I'm just a human being with struggles. Uh, but, but, but we've got a God uh, who feels uh, the struggle uh, and the pain uh, that we endure uh, when we're walking through life. Right. 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 And, and, and two words began to ring out uh, in my spirit as I prayed. Shattered dreams. <laughs> what you thought it was supposed to be, uh, it's not that. Uh, what you thought uh, life would be uh, and the hopes that you have seem to be scattered on the ground uh, like so many bleached bones uh, by the sun. Well, let's pray for a minute. He cut up a higher. I was going to speak to everybody in here, but he's got some specific things he wants to say. Hallelujah. And the issue is uh, what used to be a fruitful field (laughs) is now (laughs) it seems to be so much uh, a desolate wilderness. (laughs) 
the days are long and the heat never stops until you get to the night and the heat lifts uh, and the howling winds begin to blow across the sand uh, of your landscape. And it's not just nighttime, but the hoot owl of doubt becomes perched uh, in the bushes uh, where you're dwelling. And he starts speaking his doubt uh, and hooting it. Uh, and you're saying, uh, Lord, will this ever end? <laughs> and then the vultures uh, and the buzzards start circling in the daytime. <laughs> and you know what they come for? They're coming from the, for the carry-on. They're coming for whatever's left over. What, what the other wild beast didn't get. <laughs> you know, I hate the devil. Oh, I hate him with an awful passion. I tell you, i he, he, he takes dreams that God gave and, and, and he does his best to mar the image of it in your soul until you believe it'll never be. But if it wasn't meant to be, God never would have given it to you. Let me preach that hoot owl out of your heart today. I bind that spirit of doubt. If God said it, he meant to do it. If God told you and you knew it, you need to rise up in your spirit and say, it is going to be all right. God is. Hallelujah. Say, but Brother Brian, when I leave here, wild beasts are going to come back again because the landscape's still the same. Brother Brian, do you really understand that I'm dry? Do you understand I, I feel numb? And numb by the pain. How do I feel what God wants to do when I'm numb? And all these see see when you get when you get to a dry place, there's no water. Any water that's there is precious. So, so really you got to wait in line to get you just a little sip because everybody else is waiting until a sip oozes up to the surface and there's not enough to go around and a tribe place it's a, it's a lonely place Bible tells us in the New Testament that Unclean spirits gather up in the dry places. <laughs> Preacher, I, I, I hear you preaching, but we're in the desert. We're not in a garden. We're in the desert. Preacher, just look around at the world. Look how bad it's getting. We hear the old song, this world is a wilderness. And I'm ready for deliverance. <laughs> but the Bible didn't stop with Isaiah chapter 34. See, Isaiah 32 through 34 is a picture of the landscape of nations, the landscape of cities, the landscape of families and the landscape of individual hearts. 
when, 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 when God has not got absolute precedence in your life, nothing prospers the way it should. Oh, oh you might be prospering in the world's terminology, but while everything's going so good in this area, the family's falling to pieces. Oh yeah, one of the wealthiest men in the United States owns many television networks and companies and all this. He said, I've been extremely successful in my businesses. He said, I've succeeded at everything I've done. He said, except for marriage and I've failed three times in a row and don't think I'm ever going to get it right. What is the treasures of this world if you have no one to share them with? What is, what is finances but nobody loves you enough to spend time with you? What is, what is natural success but you're a broken, bitter person? There's no joy in it. There's no joy in it. I used to take joy in it but but now what I took joy in has become a, a pasture for wild donkeys. It's like the devil's just running rampant uh, over my whole landscape. Uh, the land I used to think was mine, it's not mine anymore. It's overrun. The sanity I used to think I had, it, it, it's not like it used to, it's splintering. Oh, I know I'm preaching to some people right now. Yada Bahaya. <laughs> but the Bible doesn't stop with Isaiah 34. <laughs> There's Isaiah chapter 35. And it starts off the wilderness and the solitary place shall rejoice or shall be glad for them. Who is them? And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. How, how is the wilderness and the lonely place going to be glad for them? How is the desert going to rejoice and blossom as the rose? Keep reading. Verse 2. And it shall blossom abundantly. You're telling me that in the middle of my desert, something is going to start blossoming abundantly other than thorns and briars? And it's going to rejoice even with joy and singing? I hadn't heard a song of joy in so long. I know that's what your heart's saying. I hear somebody else singing with joy, but where is my joy? He said, in the glory of Lebanon, the beautiful trees and cedars of Lebanon shall be given unto it. He said, I'm going to put trees in the middle of your desert. And the excellency of Carmel and Sharon, that, that hilly countryside that's so beautiful and lush and picturesque. And they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. But it doesn't stop there. It just, who, who is them? We're going to get there in just a second. Verse 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. I come here to strengthen the weak hands. I come to confirm the feeble knees. You're not going to keep sitting in that wheelchair of despair. You're getting up. Yeah. Come on now. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Say to them of a fearful heart, be strong, brother. Be strong, sister. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with a vengeance. Who's he going to have vengeance on? He's going to have vengeance on the bittern and the cormorant and the owl and the satan. Hallelujah. 
He will come and save you. Huh? He will. Verse five, don't stop there. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. I prophesy today, if you'll rise up in faith, uh, supernatural physical healing will take place in this house. I'm not talking about something I hope. I'm telling you what I know. Then shall the lame leap as a deer and the tongue of the dumb is going to sing because it's been unloosed. This is the reason why. For in the wilderness shall waters break out. Come on, I'm stretching forth the rod and the rock is going to open. He cut out behind. Streams are going to break out in your desert, sister. Streams are going to break out in your family. Verse number seven. And the parched ground shall become a pool. The thirsty land springs of water. <laughs> and all of this sounds like resurrection of something that's dead. Something that's gone. He said in the habitation of those dragons from chapter 34. Where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Devil, you can lay your sorry carcass right in my way, but a stream, a, a, a spring of water and grass is going to grow up all around you. And an highway shall be there. And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those, the way fair and men, though fools. Even if we feel like we can't get it together. They shall not err or get off track. You say, you say, who is them, Brother Brandt? Who is them? This world is a desert. This world is a wilderness. And as much as the devil can, he'll pull you out into it. He's trying to, he's trying to encroach on the garden, the oasis in the desert. You say, who is them? Who's going to rejoice? I tell you what it is. God has raised up in the middle of the desert an oasis called the church. You say, preach, I've been walking through a desert for long enough. You just stumbled into the oasis. You just stumbled. There's streams in the desert. He there are fountains uh, of living water uh, that are flowing. Come on, there's healing for your body. There's healing for your back. Uh, there's healing for your soul. Uh, you say, what are you preaching, preacher? There's hope uh, in the church. Uh, there's hope uh, in the highway called holiness. Valley of dry bones, uh, I prophesy to you. Rise up. Uh, let order uh, come to the bones. Uh, 
I prophesy to the wind, let breath come into these bodies. If you believe God's going to heal you, I'm telling you to stand up right now. I feel my help. I feel the Holy Ghost. If you believe it, step out of your pew just as quickly as you can. And by the time you make it down here, I want you rejoicing in the Lord right now. Come on, we're going to lay hands on you. Come on, preachers. Come on, right now, right now. Come on, preachers. Come on, Brother Davis. Come on, Brother Howe. Come on, Brother Ainsworth. Come on. Come on, there's so much faith in here right now. Come on, God's getting ready to turn some things around. God's getting ready to turn whole family trees around. Come on, start laying hands with authority. In the name of Jesus Christ, 